A system is a step-by-step process. If you look at the body's digestive system, step one, the food goes down your mouth, step two, it goes into your esophagus, step three, it goes through some some acids and gets uh, processed, step four, it goes through your intestines and then something else happens and nutrients get spread all over your body and then it gets recycled and some of it comes out it goes down into the earth and the earth uses that for something else so it's like a system that uh, just keeps using and reusing stuff but I am trying to focus on a different aspect of a system just the fact that whenever you have steps and then you put them in a certain right order it emerges something it makes something happen for example if you put four letters in the right order you could get the word read R E A D if you scramble them and put them out of order you'll get nonsense so in order for anything meaningful to exist it has to be put in just the right order and so a system is a bunch of steps put in the right order take a computer program for example it's a written program it says if then if this happens then do this so a computer hardware reads those instructions and does everything and it can do many different things, whatever the computer can do, and all because somebody wrote a bunch of steps and put them in just the right order. Or take a human thinking. A human thinking is also takes place in a logical order. One thought follows another thought. Meaningful patterns are created and it's called the thinking process. When there is no meaningful pattern, there is chaos, there is nothing, there is no process, no system. So in order for anything meaningful to exist and function, it has to be a part of a system. So again, think of a human body digestive system, how it it is integrated with other systems, because in order to even bring food to your mouth and to digest it in your system you first have to have a system to obtain food in the first place and then let's say working system can help you with that or a welfare system can help you with that let's say you don't have work and then so you have to go to the office fill out the application and then some people review your uh, application and either reject you or or give you money and then you take this money and you go to the store and you buy the food and then you come home and you eat it and then your digestive system takes place so everything is like an onion layer after layer a system a, a system is within a system imagine existence is like a board game and each person is like a peg. They're attached to the board. You cannot pick them up. You can just move them into different directions. So just like that, you cannot just take a human and put them in nothing and have it function. A human has to be a part of a system in order to function. Earth is a system too. It has many processes which makes things alive and keep things going. Without them, no life would be here. Earth itself wouldn't function. But Earth needs the sun. And the sun needs something else in order to exist. So everything, everything in the universe is a part of the system. It has to be, otherwise it couldn't function think about human consisting of many many different systems plus a human belongs to many 
non-physical systems like political system, school system, family system, country system. In order to function in a society, human has to follow certain steps, certain rules for behavior, and that creates a system. So everything in order to function has to be a part of the system. And a human system is uh, alive. And so, if you think about it, a human is a part of the Earth system. So, if a human is alive, why not Earth then, too, being alive? Let's say a human has living cells inside and little neurons in the brain. Well, you could see the Earth having life inside of it, which are humans, and also having big neurons in Earth's brain, which are human heads, pretty much. So if a human system is alive, then why would the Earth system not be? Take a bird flocking. It's a good example of a system. Each bird performs a little step. And because of that, together they create this movement. It looks like a living cloud of dust that creates different shapes and moves around. It's like it gives you a feeling that it's alive. And it is because it exists from living things. And together they create something bigger than themselves. Or let's take an ant hill. Ant hill is an organism which basically solves an equation. It finds the shortest route to its food source. But individual ants are part of this organism and they are the ones doing the work but they don't even know what they're doing they just follow little steps but together it's like a machine that's creating something making something happen like an organism like a system and so if you take a take a human it's a little system if you take a earth it's a bigger system and if you think of the universe it's a huge system and again in order for anything to function successfully it has to be a part of a system if it was chaotic and random nothing would be at least not like it is now so if you think of a system you know you can write a description of a system like a computer program you write the words, but nothing happens until you actually put them into action. So you could say it's like a blueprint of the system. So each soul has a blueprint of its system. And so it can be brought back to life, it can be recreated, resurrected, restored. It's like taking a data file on the computer and backing it up and installing it on a different computer it's kind of the same idea. You can take a soul and you can back it up. Although we don't know how to do that yet, but we are a part of the system and the system knows because it's designed to know. It, it's just the way it is. It's like we know how to go to the bathroom or we know that we have to eat. We know we have to give birth to children. We just know because we were just designed to know and the system knows. So whatever happens within the system is because it just is like that. It was designed to be like that. A human system has many different subsystems and those subsystems interact with each other. If you imagine a world and then freeze it for a second and note how each person is doing something different and then unfreeze it and then let some actions continue and then freeze it again and then you'll see how the world was frozen in a different way people are now doing something else so it's like a state changed and in the same way a human <coughs> In the same way, a human has different states, 
and from moment to moment these states change and each state is like a system and each system has its own set of rules for behavior responses reactions to the environment and plans and goals so for example a happy person has one kind of uh, combination of things inside at that moment and he will make a different decision about the same thing than an unhappy person would make so the combination that's inside of you it's your system it takes control of your body at that moment and it makes you act according to its rules because you have different systems or different states of being well there's two things first you have different systems that work together that interact and some of them get activated and work together and some of them work separately and the second thing is you have states of being it would be like a bunch of those systems creating a bigger system so let's say you have 10 systems five of them are interacting and they're creating a an overall system out of five and then let's say there was a set of four systems they're interacting working together and creating a system that is a set of four and it's like you're a little bit different depending on which system which set of these programs or systems is now in charge of your body um, another example is you could be an emotional person and the goals of your emotional system are different from the goals of a logical person's system so for example if there were three people on the island and there was one boat and you could save only two people a logical person would say the goal of everything is to preserve as much life as possible therefore I have to save two and leave one behind because if I attempt to save the third one it may be that all three will die and that's unacceptable but an emotional person its system has different plans and different goals it acts based on emotions based on how a person will feel and it's a really bad feeling to leave someone no matter what so in this person's mind it doesn't matter what their end result is the most important thing is you don't leave anyone it's just it's not done and if you lose your lives all of them at the risk of trying to save the third one then that's what you should do because this system makes plans based on how it will feel I will attempt to explain a little bit more about the difference between states of being and different interactions between systems so states of being is when you can be happy you can be sad you can be excited you can be discouraged frustrated angry lonely a different combination of whatever it is in your body creates or emerges a state of being when the combination is there it makes you act a certain way and when you are in this state of being it could be seen as a system all in itself because it is interacting at this moment it is making you do it is making you do things it is making decisions so you make decisions based on your current state of being whether you're happy sad or focused or relaxed or excited the other part where your different systems interacting is different thing different systems it's something like this part of you is 
an ability to stay focused and resolve a problem. A part of you has an ability to be sexually aroused and take sexual actions about a woman. A part of you has the ability to nurture or comfort a child. A part of you has the ability to make jokes and be humorous. A part of you has the ability to be nice to others, to be aware of what you're doing, how you're affecting others. So let's say you are trying to solve a problem, so you're very focused, and a part of you that's good at solving a problem is now activated and working. The question is, while you're trying to solve a problem, are you also going to be nice to people around you, or are you going to be not nice? It depends on whether your social program or system is also running at this moment together with your problem-solving system. Because sometimes a human body does not have enough resources to run two programs at one time, so it eliminates, it deactivates one while the other one takes the floor. So sometimes very smart people are jerks because there is not enough resources to, for them to run the program that takes care of manners. So the programs interacting is something like being nice to people while you're trying to problem solve. It's not to do with your state of being, even though in some sense it is, because when you're focused, it's a certain state of being. But it's not the same as being happy or relaxed, or maybe it is, but anyways, that's what I was trying to say. And another point of this recording was to say that the right interaction between systems or certain steps put in the right order emerge something, they emerge life. So life does not have to be biological only, could be different types of life. As long as there is a system and step by step right order of things and it has to be of a certain quality and complexity but once it reaches that point it becomes alive it becomes a life form so there are more life forms exist than we realize because we're used to thinking of life as something that's like us biological eats or drinks but there could be different ways to exist besides that and more about this I would talk about in the recording called visualizing the abstract maybe and live different life forms maybe between the two of them